I know what you're thinking. You said you wanted to do something fun today, and I saw the name of the episode when I clicked on it, and that doesn't look fun. Yeah, we haven't really had a Wednesday writing time chat, or the Friday fiction chat, or just a regular old fireside chat in a while, where we just got to talk. And... Well, it's not a perfect system because I only hear your comments later. I I feel like we, we need to just have a chat today on this episode of Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. And yeah, today I, I wanted to just chat with y'all. Just have a bit of a catch-up. We've been doing the world building series and I've been having a lot of fun with that. And from what I've seen on the interwebs, I think y'all have been having some fun with that too. But I just wanted to talk today. Because over the years I've made... It no secret that I suffer from depression and anxiety. And I know there are quite a few out there who go through this too. And right now, with everything that's going on, it it, it creates an odd cognitive dissonance in my mind. And I don't know what it's doing for you all, but it, it's it's me. It's, it's a strange, strange sensation because I have a tendency to kind of look at the world and I, I, I have been accused of being a pessimist on numerous occasions. I, I can find, I, I can find the dark cloud in every silver lining. I can find what, what's going to go wrong, what's going to be bad in just about everything. And part of that is genetic. I get that from my family. I see it in my parents. I see it in my siblings. But part of that is also my culture and the place where I live and how I was raised. And now, as we're living through this time where all of the darkest, most sinister fears that I have ever had in the back of my mind, in in my nightmare world, are coming true all around me. It's left me in an odd state of almost paralysis, of, of just being stuck, because usually when I am having issues with my depression, I can look out at the world and go, you know, you're exaggerating, you're making things up, you're seeing things that aren't really there, or you're interpreting things in the worst possible way when there are better ways to do it. And in some respects, I'm still doing that, but it, it, this is my nightmare scenario. This is the world that I always was afraid that I would find myself living in, where there are idiots in power who don't care about average people, who don't care about the rest of us who aren't trying to help us, who aren't trying to save us. And there are exceptions to that. There are some governors around the country who are doing a decent job, but, you know, I've always been loath to put my trust in people in power because, from my experience, people who have power are often, more often than not, more interested in preserving their power than they are in helping others. And that continues to appear to be the case. And so, as this strange world is unfolding around us, and I find myself and my life completely and utterly changed, and yet somehow 
oddly the same. I mean, we own a restaurant, and so that part of my life has changed dramatically. It has changed more than I could have ever imagined, where we're doing pickup and delivery, we're not doing near the volume that we used to do. And that's, that's insane. And it, it's problematic because we have employees and they have families. And I feel a great sense of responsibility for them that I, I don't have any power over. I, I can't help more than I can help. And that sense of powerlessness, in some ways, is striking me harder than the powerlessness I have in the face of the disease that's going around. That's a lightning bolt. It's either going to strike or it's not going to strike. And we can do our best not to be running around holding up a giant metal pole on flat land to try not to get struck. But it... We can do what we can do to mitigate our risk, but it feels like those people in my life who need help, I should be able to help them. I have friends in New York who work in the hospitals, and I see the stress that they're enduring, and they're so far away, and there's nothing I can do. And that powerlessness and that helplessness is trapping. And I think a lot of us are feeling that right now. I think a lot of us, for various reasons and from variant causes, are feeling that powerlessness, that almost hopelessness. And I don't think it has to be that way. I really don't. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to give my bona fides as an avowed pessimist because I do see so much good in the world. And if it wasn't for this crisis, I don't know if I would have noticed that it was there. I mean, just going back to my own life, like I said, we own a business, we own a restaurant. And as the orders came to not let people in and to not, you know, seat people, and everything started getting rough, we had people who would come in to order lunch for themselves, pick up lunch, and they would buy a gift certificate. They would buy a gift card. And they would tell us flat out that they, they had no intention of ever redeeming the card. They just wanted to do something to help. And that is amazing to me. And we're seeing little stories about that around the country and around the world with people making parts for ventilators with their 3D printers to people who are sewing masks and giving them away. We, we see this goodness that's been hidden behind all of the things that we were pretending were important. All of the little things. All of the teams. And I don't think everything's fine. I don't think everything's going to be fixed through this or because of this experience. But I do know that we need to be thinking now about what we want to rebuild after all this. Because we will have to rebuild. Just south of where I live, tornadoes went through and ravaged so many towns. And this is the second round of that this year, and there's probably going to be more to come. And they're going to have to physically rebuild. But we're all going to have to rebuild. We're going to have to make a new world. And it won't be the same as the old one. It, it can't be. This experience, this collective experience, has changed us all. And I don't hear a lot of people starting that conversation now. And 
I can understand that to a certain point of view. I was trying to stay distracted. And that's why I was doing the episodes that I was doing. Is they were distracting for me. They were a diversion for me. And I think for a lot of you as well. But we're not completely through this. But we need to start thinking about what it is we want to see after this. What is the world that we want to build after this? Because if this crisis has shown us anything, it's shown us the flaws, serious, serious flaws built into the system that we have now and how that system cannot, cannot be allowed to move forward without significant overhaul, if not completely being torn down and rebuilt. And we need to start thinking about that now. We need to start considering what that new world is going to look like. Don't worry, I'm not going to get up on my soapbox. This isn't going to become a political show in that sense, though I think this show has always been political because politics is personal. Do you know who says politics isn't personal and politics shouldn't be personal and you should keep your politics out of my entertainment? People who like the status quo. People who like things the way that they are. People who are benefiting from the system that exists now. They don't want change. But all politics is personal. Every, every one of us is touched by it. We live in the world together, not apart. I come from a relatively poor family. And I live in a poor part of the country. And so I grew up understanding what it's like not to have certain things. And I never realized exactly how much different my upbringing was from that of my husband. My husband grew up in the upper middle class. And, you know, this is, the experiences that we're going through now has been really, I think, a lot more jarring for him than for me. Because I'm just going back to those lessons I learned in my youth on how to make meals stretch and how to, you know, make a dollar stretch. How we can, you know, make do with what we have. You know, and he's not had to do that to the extent that I have in my life. But we're all lower class now. We're all poor now. We're all trapped in our house, except for those of us who, like my husband and our employees, are classified as essential and thus are still going out and risking themselves every day so that the people in town can be fed and fed well. And I'm not bitter about that. But it's personal. We live in a country where my brother would be dead if he hadn't served in the army. My brother has a rare genetic condition. And if it wasn't for the fact that he was a veteran and they miraculously covered his treatments, he'd be dead. He, he would be dead. That's wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's wrong. And the, this is what I'm talking about when I say all politics is personal. We, we have these people in our lives. My, my, my uncle's fiance, she's almost my aunt, many years ago, died because she had cancer. And they recommended that she have a surgery to have it remo the tumor removed. And her insurance refused to pay for it. And they couldn't figure out a way to pay for it. And she died because somebody thought more about saving money than her life. And that's the world we live in. We have people right now who are suffering because, well, we need to keep our budgets trim and not have a surplus of medical equipment in case we need it. We need to not worry about being prepared for disasters. We, we can figure it out later. But we're learning the flaws in that. 
And that's what I mean when I say all politics is personal. It is. It affects us. And to a great extent of the populace who have a much more comfortable life than they realize, they don't see the flaws in the system until it gets put under stress like it is right now. And it starts to crack and it starts to break. You know, I, I disagreed with people who voted for the current president, but, you know, I, you could see where they were coming from. We Things were going well. Things were going good for us. And the idea that we weren't going to vote for expertise, I think, was always a mistake. But you could see where they thought the risk might be worth it. It's not worth it. You know, it's not about entertainment. It's not about teams. I don't care about the team. I care about people. And maybe that's what we need in this country, or all the countries, is a political movement that cares about people and putting people first. And I'm not even going to get into, like, the <laughs> political philosophy behind that, because at this moment in in time, I don't care if you're a communitarian, if you're a socialist, if you're an anarchist like me, I think we all need to have this priority that we need to help each other out, that compassion and caring are the most important things that we could be doing right now. That compassion and caring are the core of everything that we need to be doing. And that the more that we care, the more that we help, the more that we look out for one another and stop being just so about our own little lives. You know, think about all of the problems that are born out of that solipsism, out of that individuality that people are don't even realize that they're abusing, right? Well, you don't believe that transgender people are real. So even though science disagrees with you and your opinion, and we are most definitely here, we're supposed to respect your opinion, even though it it's rooted in this idea that you just haven't met anybody who's trans. Think about how many people didn't care about gay rights until, oh, oops, my, my son or my daughter or what have you, my brother or my sister, until somebody in their family came out. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why I named this episode Depression in a Time of Crisis. Because I think the real depression right now isn't the weird feelings that I'm having. I don't think that the real depression right now is the economic crisis that is inevitably going to hit us after this is past. I think we are suffering from a depression, a loss, a complete lack of fellow feeling, of compassion, of caring. And we're seeing that get reborn right now. And it's like a phoenix rising from the ashes, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. And if only it could have happened under better circumstances, we would be celebrating, we would be dancing in the streets. But with all the suffering and sorrow and all the hardship right now, we don't have the energy or the will to do that. We're waking up to the realization that we are all in this together. And that it doesn't matter what I think you should have. That there's a certain amount of basic humanity we should be respecting in one another. And it's starting to rise. We are starting to come together. We are starting to believe again that we might make things better and that there might 
be a chance that we could help each other out. And that is a beautiful thing. And that is the hope that I am clinging on to right now. In all of this chaos, in all of this insanity, in all of this pain, we will get through this. And on the other side, we will have the opportunity to build a new and better world if we don't let it slip through our fingers. And I think people are suffering enough that at least for a generation, we might be willing to fight. Our grandparents did during the Great Depression. Maybe we can now. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope it helped give you a little bit of hope. I mean, these are the things that I've been thinking about, and I promise the next episode will be a bit happier and a, a bit more upbeat, and not just me talking about the state of the world, but I just wanted to get this off my chest. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show, down in the show notes you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean, so I can use it on the show. I would love to hear from you. If you'd like to join the project, down in the show notes you'll also find links to the voice uh, to the listener support and my patreon thank you to everyone who does that you mean the world to me and if you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving that's perfectly all right no pressure whatsoever but if you know of anybody who might enjoy any of the work that i do please please share it with them that helps out more than you know all right i hope you're doing fine i hope you're doing well so until next time, stay safe, stay well, and don't forget to have the fun. Bye.